Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. If you like to build or repair guitars, I suggest you click that subscribe button down below, and you'll become part of a community of fellow luthiers, and together, we can take your skills to a whole new level. If you'd like to support my guitar building YouTube channel, visit eGuitarPlans.com and buy a plan. A link is in the description below. Now on with the video. In this episode of From the Luthier's Workbench, I'm going to be covering part 22 of the Highline Laminated Top Guitar Build. And in this episode, we're going to get nutty. That's right. We're going to actually start to make the nut for this guitar. So let me bring you in a little closer. I'll show you the tools I use and we'll get started. Now the tools that I used uh, to make a nut are pretty straightforward and simple. They're, they aren't too complicated. And most of these I got at Stumac. However, I'll put some links down in the description below so you can check out different sources for these depending upon your budget. And what I have here, first of all, are some nut files. And these range in size from uh, 10 thousandths of an inch all the way up to 42 thousandths of an inch. And basically every gauge in between. I, I think I've got I've got these numbered as 10, 13, 16, 20, 24, 32, 42, and this last big one here is a 56. And I use these quite a bit, and I've been using them for years and years and years, and they work really well. I also uh, keep a, a 10 thousandths of an inch saw, and this is a push cut saw, which means it cuts on the push stroke. And this is just really handy for starting some of the slots. And then I have a, this is a string spacing rule. And I use this to determine the exact position of the slots on the nut. And this is a really handy ruler for accurately measuring those out so that you don't get any weird spacing when you try to slot the nut accurately from a wide 42 gauge or, or even larger down to your 10 or your 9 or whatever uh, string gauge you use on the, the high E string. I also like to use a digital caliper to help uh, with some of the measurements that I need to make. And then I've got a pencil which has been sanded in half. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I'll explain its purpose here shortly. And then, of course, the material that I'm going to use for the nut, which in this case is a cow femur. And I actually purchase cow femurs from a local pet store. And these are essentially dog bones. And from one of these dog bones, which costs about five, six bucks, I can cut it up into at least... 20 blanks that I can use for making guitar nuts. So now we'll move to the other end of the headstock and I'll start to show you how I prepare the process of making the nut. The first thing I have to do is to measure the slot that I'm going to place the nut. And when I make my fretboard, since I'm using a CNC machine, I'll carve out this slot with the CNC machine at a dimension that I like to use for the nuts. And typically I like the nuts to be uh, about um, 3 16 of an inch wide or thick, depending on uh, how you're looking at this. But I'll use my digital calipers to measure the thickness of that slot, front to back basically, from the bridge side to the tuner side. And in this case, it's about 0.1825 inches. And what I'll do is I'll just tighten this set screw so that it's not gonna move. And then I can use my calipers to carefully measure the piece of bone as I cut it and start to sand it into a blank that will fit precisely into that slot. And the key here is that from the start to the finish, we go from oversized down to the perfect size. Now I'll take the chunk of bone over to my bandsaw and I'll cut off a slice that I'll use to make the nut blank. 
Next, I'll take that crude blank over to my belt sander and I'll begin to shape it. And then every so often I'll stop to measure it with my digital calipers to make sure I'm getting close to that final thickness. Now the key here is to sand gradually to the final shape. It's easy to take off too much material and end up with a nut that's too small to fit snug into the slot. So I'll start by sanding with a coarse grit and I'll get really close to that final dimension, leaving a little bit extra. Then I can start to work my way through progressively finer grits until the blank will fit snug into that slot. But it, it takes a little bit of, of trial and error to get it just right. And by the time I get to the finest grit of sandpaper, the nut should fit just perfectly into that slot. It needs to be snug without being too tight. Now remember that flat pencil I showed you earlier? I'll lay that onto the top of the fret so that I can draw a line that follows the radius of the fretboard and the fret wire. That's going to be roughly the top of the nut. And then I'll take it to my disc sander and I'll sand down the top until it's just slightly proud of that line. I don't want to go all the way down to the line because the bottom of that line actually represents the uh, maximum depth of the slots where the strings will sit. If I, if I were to go all the way down to that line, the nut wouldn't be tall enough. And with the nut snug in its slot, I can start to plan out the positioning of the slots. And I'm going to do that by first taking some sewing threads and I'll put it into the low E string tuner on the headstock and then I'll pull it all the way back to the bridge and I'll carefully position that line so that the distance between the edge of the line and the edge of the fretboard is equal along its entire length. Then I can come back in with a pencil and mark the position where that string sits right on the top of the nut. That's going to be the low E string nut slot. Then I'll repeat that same process on the other side of the fretboard for the high E string. And now that I know my high and low E string spread, I can use my string spacing ruler to figure out the spacing of the strings in between those two marks. And this ruler is really nice because it takes into consideration the fact that your low strings, the wound strings, are larger in diameter. So it's the slots are marked to, for perfect positioning here. Once I've established the string spacing with my tick marks, the next thing I'll do is I'm going to take a fine curve fret saw and I'm going to just nick the top of the nut with that saw. And this will put very shallow grooves where I can temporarily place the strings in order to make sure that I've got the spacing at least visually exactly what I want it to be. And of course to check that spacing I need to string up the guitar. And once I have the strings installed, I can then slide them over until they click into those little shallow slots that I cut with that little fret saw. And thus begins the process of actually slotting the nut with my nut slotting files. And I'll start with the low E string and a 42 thousandths nut slotting file. And I will file using a technique where I will gradually move the file from side to side in order to make the slot slightly wider than the string. And then every so often I'll drop that string back into the slot just to make sure everything's going to fit properly. And where the 
string exits the nut towards the tuners, I like to widen it out a little bit just so that there's nothing for the string to catch on as I'm tuning the string. And then I use a fairly simple technique to check the depth of the slot. What I like to do is press the string down at the second fret until it touches the top of the fret. And then I'll check to see how much play there is between the bottom of the string and the top of the first fret. I try to get that as small as I possibly can. Each of the additional slots is cut in exactly the same manner, just with an appropriate sized slotting file. One thing I can't stress enough is the importance of gradually creeping up on the final depth of your nut slot. If you take it too quickly and go too far, the nut's ruined because you can't fill in a, a slot that's too deep. I, there are some tricks where guys have used uh, bone powder or baking soda powder and mixed it with CA glue and filled in the slot to recut it, but that never lasts. So you just want to make sure that you replace the string in the slot every so often while you're filing the, the, the slot's depth, and then check the, uh, the height of the string over that first fret, and do this periodically as you're cutting that, that slot's final depth, and you'll gradually creep up on it, and once you've gotten pretty much all the way there, stop. Another tip is when you're filing the slot, I like to file at a slightly downward angle towards the uh, tuners instead of keeping the, the bottom of the slot parallel to the top of the fretboard. By doing that, I create a little bit of fall away that uh, actually uh, transitions the bottom of the slot away from the bottom of the string as it heads towards the tuner and that gives better tone and better sustain for the string. Now once I've cut the slots into the nut to almost, almost the depth that I want, the next thing I'll do is I will check the string action at the 12th fret and if necessary I'll raise or lower the saddles to achieve that correct string action, or at least what I think is correct, what I feel is correct. At that point, I can come back in and check the action of the strings at the first fret, and if necessary, deepen the slots to their final depth. And at that point, the slots are done. With the slots now cut to their final depth, I need to do a little bit of final sanding in order to get the dimensions of the nut exactly right for this guitar. Now I don't want to mess around with the face of the nut or the back of the nut because if I do that I run the risk of making the nut too small to fit in the slot and it doesn't really matter because I can't see it anyways. But at this point the nut is a little bit too wide on both sides. So I'm just going to sand it with some coarse sandpaper to get it down to the correct width. I also like to round off some of the sharp corners just to make the nut a little more comfortable, especially when you're playing up around that first fret. And once I've cleaned up that rough shape, I'll work through a progression of sanding grits starting with a piece 400 and then I'll work my way up through 600, 800, 1000, uh, 1200 and then I'll finish with 1500 grit and I'm using 3M's flexible hook it sheets for this. These are really great for this because they're flexible and easy to conform to the shape of the nut and from there I can take it over to my buffing machine and bring it up to a nice high gloss shine. Thank you. 
And then finally, the last step is to apply a little bit of wood glue to the bottom of the nut, place it in the slot, and then install the strings, put a little bit of tension on it, and that'll clamp it into place while the glue dries. And really, that's all there is to making a nut. Incredibly simple and easy. Just about anybody could do it, right? All right, guys, well, that's all the time I have for this episode. I covered a lot of stuff today. If you've got any comments or questions, as always, put them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And I think what I'll talk about in the next episode is the final setup for this guitar. So hopefully that'll go pretty smoothly. And I think at that point, this guitar will be completely done. Whew. That's going to be, what, 23-part series? That's a lot. And it really isn't that complicated of a guitar. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, as always, if you enjoy videos on building guitars and you don't subscribe to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the bell for notifications so that you'll be notified every time I post up a new guitar building video, which is a couple times a week. And if you would like to show some support for the work I do here, because, you know, every little bit helps, make sure you head over to eGuitarPlants.com and purchase a plan. Now, even if you're not going to build one of the guitars that I've designed or the tools that I use, every little bit helps out this channel to keep me going. And as always, uh, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.